We're now going to take a different approach to calculate the mean values and standard deviations for the ideal spin system. And I will also summarize everything that we did and check the consistency of the results here. So first I'm going to start with this quantity n. n, if you remember, is what we called the number of upspins. So here we have an ideal spin system uh, that consists of upspins and downspins and there is no interaction uh, between uh, these spins. They are uh, far away. So this is the first one, this is the second one, uh, this is the, let's put another one here, ith one and this is the nth one. Okay, so we have a total of capital N spins. I'm going to define a number u sub i. I'm going to call this up down number for the ith spin. And this is uh, how I define it. It is equal to 1 if the spin is up, it is equal to zero if the spin is down. Now with this definition, if I call n uh, the number of up spins, you can see that n will be the sum over all spins from one to capital N, their corresponding up-down numbers. So this is going to give me the total number of up spins and then I have also n prime a number of down spins and the probability uh, of being up is p is probability of a spin being up that is u is equal to 1 and q is the probability of a spin uh, pointing down so that I will have u is equal to zero. Now with this definition um, and given in terms of the up-down number of the uh, spins, you can see that if I take the mean value of n, this is going to be i equals 1 to n u sub i mean value. And the mean value of uh, u, uh, whether it's up or down, uh, does not depend on which spin I'm at because the spins are non-interacting. Uh, so I have non-interacting uh, spins. And I also have this property, if you have two functions added up, you're taking the average, it's f bar plus g bar. So I can write this as n bar is equal to i equals 1 to n u sub i bar, which is uh, u sub i bar is equal to u bar for all spins. So this is going to be equal to capital N times u bar. Now my question is what is u bar? u bar is equal to, so it is either uh, 1 with probability p or 0 with probability q. So this is 1 times p plus 0 times q, so it is p. Therefore I find that the mean value of n must be equal to n, capital N, p. Uh, consistent with what we have found uh, earlier. Now I would like to find the standard deviation of n. Uh, so delta n by definition is equal to n minus n bar. So it is sum from i equals 1 to capital N u sub i, that is n, and minus n bar, which is i equals 1 to n u bar. So this is actually nothing but i equals 1 to n uh, delta u, delta u i. Uh, so the deviation from the mean value of u uh, added over all spins is equal to the deviation of n from 
its average value n bar. Now, if I calculate uh, delta n uh, square, uh, this is going to be equal to um, delta u1 plus delta u2 plus delta un multiplied by itself, delta u1 all the way up to delta un. And you will see that this uh, delta n square will have two types of terms, delta u1 uh, square, delta u2 square, delta un square, etc. So that's one type of terms here. So it is the summation i equals 1 to n, uh, delta ui squared, and then I will have cross terms, delta u1, delta u2, etc. So i equals 1 to n, j equals 1 to n, i is not equal to j, delta ui, delta uj. So it will have uh, two types of terms. So if I take its average value, delta n square bar, which is the variance, it's going to be equal to the summation i equals 1 to n, delta ui square bar plus i equals 1 to n, j equals 1 to n, delta ui, delta uj bar, i is not equal to j, and uh, for delta ui, uh, so let's, let's take it one step further, for the variance of uh, n, dispersion of n, I have a summation i equals 1 to n, uh, delta ui square bar, because the summation and the averaging operations commute. And then I have uh, i equals 1 to n, j equals 1 to n, delta ui bar multiplied with delta uj bar, i is not equal to j. Why? Because the average of two functions, product of two functions, is f bar dot g bar if statistically independent, and which is the case for the ideal spin system. So I can write it this way. And recall that delta u uh, i bar is u i bar minus u bar, which is zero. So this term is going to give me just uh, zero. Uh, so I need to evaluate what is delta u uh, square bar. Uh, it's just a function of u. It's going to be the same for all spins, again, because there is no preference over one spin of, over the other. So this is going to be the same for all spins. So let me take this uh, one step further and calculate this delta u square bar. It is the value of u, possible value of u uh, is a 1. Uh, one of the possible values is 1. 1 minus the average value of u. Average value of u is here. It is uh, p. So it is 1 minus p squared. What is the probability of having a value 1? It is p. Plus uh, 0 minus p squared. And the probability of having a 0 is Q. So I use the definition of the average. So this is going to be equal to 1 minus p is q. So it is p q squared plus q p squared, which is q p parentheses p plus q, which is p q. Uh, so I have found the variance of uh, u. And if I go back to the variance of n, it is going to be capital N times the variance of u. So uh, the variance of n is capital N times the variance of u. So it's going to be equal to npq. So I have found the variance of n to be npq. Uh, the standard deviation of n 
is going to be then its square root, which is square root npq. Um, so most n values will be in a range um, n bar, which is np, plus or minus square root npq, and the magnitude of uh, relative uh, fluctuations delta n divided by n bar relative magnitude of fluctuations will be square root npq divided by np so it will be 1 over square root n q over p to the power 1 half <clears throat> So this will be the relative magnitude of fluctuations in and as you can see it scales with 1 over square root n. And uh, at this point I want to uh, move on to the total uh, magnetic moment number m. So I have found all the statistical quantities I can calculate for n and now I want to discuss what happens to m m is the total uh, magnetic moment number m total magnetic moment number if you remember this is just equal to the number of up spins minus the number of down spins actually it's the number of up moments minus number of down moments but I'm assuming I have positive charge here so the moments and the spins are in the same direction. So since n plus n prime is equal to capital N, m is equal to n minus capital N minus n, so it is 2n minus n. So since m is equal to 2n uh, minus capital N, if I take the average value of both sides, I find that m bar is 2n bar, minus n so it's going to be equal to 2 n p uh, minus n so if i take it into n parentheses this is 2 p minus 1 and this is 2 p minus uh, p plus q is 1 so i will have for m bar n times p minus q And then looking at this equation again, so if I calculate from m equals 2n minus n, if I take the delta of both sides, I get the deviation from the mean of m is twice the deviation from the mean of n, and deviation from the mean of a constant is 0, so it's 2 delta n. So delta m square bar will be equal to 4 times delta n square bar so I can calculate what delta m square bar is uh, it is 4 n p q and at this point uh, I can ca easily calculate the standard deviation of m it is the square root of the uh, variance 2 square root npq so remember by definition this is the square root of root mean square uh, so the, I know the standard deviation of m 2 square root npq and therefore my m values will be mostly in this range and capital N times p minus q plus or minus 2 square root npq that's what it means and also the relative magnitude of fluctuations delta m divided by m bar will be uh, 2 square root npq divided by n p minus q so it will be 2 divided by square root n uh, square root pq over p minus q so this will be the relative magnitude of fluctuations in m the total 
mag uh, magnetic moment number. Now I want to continue from this point to total magnetic moment, capital M. Uh, and capital M, the total magnetic moment, is by definition capital M, total magnetic moment. Uh, and mu zero is moment of one spin then I have capital M is equal to a total magnetic moment number times mu zero. So if you take the average of this quantity M bar, uh, capital M bar is uh, M bar times mu zero. So I find that the average value of the total magnetic moment will be uh, mu zero and P minus Q. And similarly, I can calculate uh, the um, dispersion of M. Delta M will be equal to delta mu zero times delta M. So delta capital M square bar is mu zero square delta M square bar. Therefore, I can calculate the variance of the total magnetic moment as uh, 4 mu zero square n p q and then I can move on to um, its uh, standard deviation the standard deviation follows from the definition it's the square root of uh, root mean square the variance or the dispersion so it's, it will be equal to um, 2 mu 0 square root npq. So this means most m values will lie in a range uh, mu 0 and p minus q plus or minus 2 mu 0 square root npq. And if you look at the relative magnitude of fluctuations in the total magnetic moment, it's going to be 2 mu 0 square root npq divided by uh, mu 0 and uh, p minus q. So this will be equal to mu zeros will cancel. 2 divided by square root n square root pq divided by P minus Q. So this will be the relative magnitude of fluctuations in capital M. Uh, one more thing we can discuss is the magnetic moment uh, per spin, that is mu. So what is the magnetic moment per spin average value? Uh, mu is magnetic moment per spin. So mu is equal to mu zero if the spin is up minus mu zero if the spin is down if the spin has positive charge so that the moment and the spin are in the same direction and this has probability p this has probability q. So what is the average value of mu? It is uh, mu zero p plus minus mu zero q. So it's going to be mu zero p minus q. So I have found the average value to be mu zero p minus q. And remember, I call mu zero the possible magnetic moment of each spin if it's pointing in a certain direction up or down. So it's either plus mu zero or minus mu zero is the magnetic moment. Um, now I'm going to uh, calculate the variance of mu delta mu square bar. So it's going to be equal to uh, mu minus mu zero p minus q. That's the average value square bar. 
and this is a function of mu right so it's a function of mu average so I have to evaluate this function at its possible values first possible value is plus mu zero so I will have plus mu zero minus mu zero p minus q squared with probability p and then I have a minus mu zero minus mu zero p minus q squared with probability q so I find that the variance of mu is uh, mu zero square one minus p plus q square p plus mu zero square uh, one plus p minus q square q so uh, one minus p plus q for one i substitute p plus q p's cancel so this will be four mu zero squared uh, q squared p and here i substitute p plus q for mu zero squared p squared q and if i take it into p q parentheses i find that um, the variance of mu is for mu zero squared q p parentheses q plus p which is one so the variance of mu is 4 mu 0 squared pq and I can calculate its standard deviation uh, the standard deviation of mu then will be the square root of this 2 mu 0 square root pq and The magnetic moment per spin will be likely in this range uh, mu zero p minus q plus or minus two mu zero square root p q with relative magnitude of fluctuations uh, two mu zero square root p q divided by mu bar mu zero p minus q so it will be 2 square root pq over p minus q for the relative magnitude of fluctuations now i want to cross check uh, the total magnetic moment number uh, m with mu values that i obtained here so if you remember uh, so let, let's think about this here uh, the relationship between a mu and m is that m is equal to i equals 1 to n mu sub i so and the uh, this basically gives me m bar is equal to n times mu bar and similar to what we did for uh, n here with this relationship I have a similar relationship for this one uh, delta m uh, square bar will be equal to so since this is um, um, basically it's going to be equal to uh, n square uh, times delta mu uh, square bar with the same type of relationship remember for n I obtained here uh, delta n square bar is equal to uh, capital N times delta U uh, square uh, bar so it will actually be capital N times so sorry about this not N square it will be capital N times delta mu square bar so let's make sure we have the same uh, type of relationship here um, for delta n square bar we have capital n times delta u square bar so we have the same type of relationships here so it's capital n times delta mu square bar so this tells me that the variance of m should be equal to 4 n mu 0 square pq and the standard deviation of m should be equal to uh, 2 mu 0 n square root pq so let's check these numbers 
uh, so for m bar i have uh, n times mu bar so that is n times mu 0 p minus q uh, so this would give me n times mu 0 p minus q so that checks uh, then i have for the total magnetic moment uh, the variance for mu zero square npq that checks and the standard deviation just follows from this so you can see that uh, going through this exercise for different quantities of the for different variables of the ideal spin system i get consistent results uh, so i can uh, calculate the average value of n starting from scratch with this approach or you can uh, get the value of n from a different approach uh, that's what we did in the uh, previous videos you can calculate the average value of n from average value of m also so going the other way around so that starting from mu and calculating all these quantities i can go back because i can obtain capital m from this from capital m i can go back to m and from m i can go back to n basically there are two ways i can go in order to calculate the statistical averages the ensemble averages and standard deviations of these quantities